Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to more beekeeping basics. Today I've returned to one of the apiary sites that we've been using uh, for demonstration purposes for our, our videos uh, to show how we put on fondant and uh, pollen substitute and uh, it's Coincidental, I had a question from one of our subscribers asking if it was too late to start feeding pollen substitute. Well, absolutely not. Um, we've been putting pollen substitute on, uh, on the, a little on the early side in order to be able to make the videos. And I would normally put pollen substitute on from around the middle of February. But if you're going to put pollen substitute on, you need to be putting it on for a reason. And uh, it's not a case that you have to put pollen substitute on or that you even need to put pollen substitute on. In the last microscopy video that I produced, which went live on Friday, I actually produced some pollen slides from a member of the Hazel family that we have growing at one of our apiaries and it's producing pollen now. It's the 2nd of February today and the bees were on the pollen and taking it back to the colonies during the warm midday period. So uh, there's absolutely no problem with putting uh, pollen substitute on your bees at this time of the year, the middle of February, in order to build up colonies. The main reason that we put it on is to build colonies up for the oilseed rape. We have a lot of oilseed rape crops around here and if it stays mild then we're likely to have a crop at some point in April and I'm trying to build up the bees in order to have the maximum size colonies that I can have for that time of year. And as I mentioned in the original video there is a risk because if we don't get a mild spring then I'm going to have to continue to feed them and look after them but if we do get a mild spring and the oilseed rape is early then I'll be in a really strong position to take advantage of the nectar flow. So it's uh, around midday there's some weak sunshine it's a bit windy but it's not too cold and I just wanted to go over and take a look at some of the colonies to see if the bees are out on cleansing flights because when you're feeding bees you want to make sure that they can get out and go on cleansing flights and when we put the pollen patties on at this site uh, the bees were out flying and uh, had already started to take the pollen substitute down. So let's wander around and just have a look at some of these colonies and just see if they are able to get out onto cleansing flights um, because I know that concerns uh, some of you beekeepers out there that maybe if they're being fed pollen patties that they're not going to be able to get out and uh, defecate properly and that's going to cause a problem. But let's uh, wander across and take a look at some of the colonies. So here's the first one and uh, obviously the bees are out flying. Let's just have a wander around. So here's the first colony and you can see the bees are out flying, out on cleansing flights, probably gathering water as well and looking really good. Another strong colony that uh, are out flying and on cleansing flights, so that's another good sign. And you can always tell the colony is doing well by looking beneath the hive. Because we've got open mesh floors, uh, we don't have any problems with damp and you can see that there are lots of cappings on the concrete slab beneath the stand. So I know that the bees are active inside there without having to open them up. And this is one of the strongest colonies here and you can see there's lots of bees out on cleansing flights today.
Again, all of these colonies have been fed pollen patties. They're all on open mesh floors and they're all looking really strong. Another example of the bees out on cleansing flights, 2nd of February. In this particular apiary, they're well sheltered, they get a little bit of sunshine, and the warmth of the sunshine has allowed them to get out onto cleansing flights. So I've no worries about these bees at all. They're all on open mesh floors again here. And um, yeah, really happy to see how active they are. So you can see the colonies there are all looking really strong. I just happened to be passing the apiary and uh, didn't have my bee suits with me so I couldn't uh, take the tops off and have a, a good look through. Um, it's still quite chilly and quite windy but despite that the bees are out on cleansing flights and doing really well. Um, for those of you that would rather feed the bees later in the season, in March, that's fine. If you'd rather feed pollen substitute as a dry feed in an open feeding system, uh, that's fine too. I think what you'll find is that with uh, as many beekeepers as there are, there are so many different ways that you can take care of your bees. And uh, I wouldn't be critical of anybody that was uh, trying to do something different to me. Uh, we all have our own views and our own different approaches to beekeeping. And that's the fantastic thing about beekeeping. So. I'm hoping that the weather will stay fair for the next few days and uh, I'll be able to grab a bee suit and pop back and just take the roofs off a couple of the colonies to see how they're doing with the pollen substitute. Um, but the bottom line is decide why you want to feed pollen substitute. If you're a beginner and you're just keeping bees uh, in your back garden in a small apiary site and you have no specific plans for queen rearing for oilseed rape then to be honest you don't need to feed pollen substitute at all it's it's not something that you have to do uh, I've just chosen to do it because I have specific reason for doing it so decide if you need to feed and why you need to feed and then decide how you want to feed it for me the pollen patties is by far the easiest way I don't really want to feed it as a dry substitute out in the open. I think that when you're open feeding dry pollen substitute, lots of bees, not only my own bees, but I'll be feeding other local bees that might be in the area. And once uh, a few workers from another colony in somebody else's apiary catches sight of the pollen substitute, we'll have all of their bees feeding from, from our pollen substitute as well. But for me, the main thing is the spread of disease. I don't want to encourage different colonies mixing together from not just my own apiaries but from other people's apiaries where I don't know whether they are as vigilant about disease as I am. 
So I would rather use a closed system of feeding the pollen substitute in the form of these pollen patties than an open feeding system in feeding the dry substitute. But that's my own personal view. I wouldn't ever criticise somebody else for doing something completely different to the way I'm doing it. As I said earlier, we each have our own ideas of, of what's best for our bees and we should be free to do that without criticism. So I'm really pleased with what we've got going on here and even though we've fed them a little bit early to demonstrate to you guys how we're feeding them it doesn't appear to be having any adverse effects at all and who knows it might even have a positive effect in that we get bigger brood areas earlier in the season than I would have normally anticipated. So I'll keep you posted. If we have anything that goes horribly wrong, then I will share that with you as well. I'm not going to just show you the good things that are happening. So if we've got dead colonies, I will show you those. If for some reason feeding them a pollen substitute at this time uh, adversely affects them, then I will show you that as well. So uh, finally, if you want to check out uh, more information about pollen substitutes and how beneficial they are there is a fantastic website called scientificbeekeeping.com uh, the uh, website owner is a guy called Randy Oliver and he's done masses of research and tests with a whole range of different things so it's well worth taking a look at. Interestingly the pollen substitute testing that he did, uh, the Ultra Bee um, pollen substitute comes out in some of the testings uh, at the top uh, and I think that has 20% protein in it compared to the B Pro uh, substitute that I'm using which uh, is less than that but his overall summary says that uh, between the top pollen substitutes uh, there's no significant difference um, but interestingly and unsurprisingly the uh, one thing that works more than anything else is natural pollen so I'm thinking that maybe this year I'm going to trap some pollen find some way of trapping pollen in the national and commercial hives that I've got and see if we can't store some for next winter so we can either mix it in with the pollen substitute or feed it just straight as as pollen um, there's again the issue of uh, disease uh, and transferring disease but I think if we freeze it and save it up for next winter then it will probably be okay. Um, okay well that's it that's my ramblings over with I hope you enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed we're edging ever closer to the start of the new season and it would be great to have you along for that don't forget to give us a thumbs up and uh, we'll catch up next time thanks for watching